When you think of the word army, you may imagine a sea of boots and lockstep, and soldiers carrying out missions in staggering uniformity. However, a cadre of atypical armies have existed throughout time. These unusual armies march to the beat of their own drummers. Actors in the freakishly tall are welcomed in these ranks, as are animals and some seriously fierce women. Here are the top 10 most unusual armies. Amazing. Number 10, an army of ghosts. The ghost army of World War II derived its name not from its ghoulish composition, but from its members, none of whom possessed any combat training. However, this charade of soldiers was no island of misfit toys. 1,000 artists, actors, sound engineers, radio operators, illustrators, and designers comprised this special tactical unit of the U.S. Army. What was their official tactical mission? That would be shenanigans to confuse the German Army. They emitted fake radio transmissions, pretended to be high-ranking drunk German officials in bars, and designed fake uniforms and vehicles, successfully staging more than 20 battlefield deceptions. It is estimated that the Ghost Army saved between 15,000 and 30,000 lives through a cacophony of mischief. Now that's taken the art of war wonderfully literally. Number 9, an army for artwork. Most armies make history, but the Monuments Men saved it. The Monuments Fine Arts and Archive section, aka the Monuments Men, were charged with protecting Europe's cultural history during World War II. This small unit of art historians, scholars, and museum curators sought to lighten the Allies' war footprint as it marched into Europe. They designed maps for bomber pilots that avoided historically and culturally significant structures. They scoured Nazi castles, salt mines, and everywhere in between to locate and return priceless works of art, including those from da Vinci and Michelangelo. In short, in the chaos of war when saving lives was paramount, they made sure to save Europe's cultural heritage. The story of the Monuments Men made it to Hollywood in 2014 in a film of the same name starring the likes of George Clooney and Matt Damon, thereby preserving the history of those who preserved history. Number 8, An Army of Dogs Since 1953, Danish doggies and their elite human counterparts have been enforcing the country's sovereignty by sled. The Sirius Dog Sled Patrol, as they're known, monitors a vast expanse of wilderness atop the Arctic Circle, over 375,000 square miles, in order to protect the northern part of Greenland, of which it is the sovereign state, from unlawful encroachment. About as miserable as the frozen planet of Hoth in Star Wars, this region is as harsh as they come. Several months pass annually without sunlight, 40 degrees below zero is the daily forecast, and only expect to exchange niceties with polar bears or the other 29 people who live there. Despite these conditions, the dogs who embark, pun intended, on the serious mission are sturdy and resilient and make these grueling excursions possible. Number 7, An Army of Autistic Teens Autistic youth is often relegated to the corners of society, where their unique talents are overlooked. Not the case with the Israeli Defense Force, who welcomed qualified autistic teens into its elite Unit 9900 Visual Intelligence Unit. Here, teens work with highly sensitive and classified information when performing imagery analysis and software quality assurance. A typical assignment would entail combing through hours of high-resolution satellite images from around the world delivered in real time to detect suspect objects and movements. While this task would be tedious for most, it's not for these teens. This is because autistic children tend to think visually and see more granularly. They're able to hone in on details and pick up nuances that would escape perception in most. Israel requires all 18-year-olds to serve in the military after high school. But only since 2008 has it begun evaluating autistic teens on a case-by-case -case basis for their inclusion. The evaluation consists of three phases. First, the teens take demanding tests and interviews to see if they're suitable. Then they're educated with a college-level satellite image analysis course. And finally, they get to decide if they want to continue their training and enlist. Unit 9900 offers a win-win for the Israeli Defense Force and autistic Israeli teens. Unit 9900 sees anomalies in satellite imagery from around the world that most minds cannot, rendering their contribution priceless. This visual reconnaissance literally saves military and civilian lives. For autistic teens who are often isolated within society, they have a viable career path that honors their unique skills and perceptions. This is especially important when Bloody 21 rolls around. 
This is the age at which Israel stops paying for services for autistic Israelis. Overall, other countries could learn from Unit 9900. Differences are often assets. It's just a matter of how you look at it. Number 6. An Army of Giants During the 18th century, Prussian King Frederick William I assembled a vertically stunning regiment of fighters who never ended up fighting. The king obsessively sulked tall men, including buying them off of other militaries and encouraging his recruits to breed with tall women to produce future recruits. One of the tallest soldiers was Finnish giant Daniel Kajanus, who was reportedly 2.34 meters or about 7 foot 8 inches in height. The king loved his caboodle of giants so dearly that he had them march in his bedroom to raise his spirits when he was ill. The Potsdam Giants, however, proved to be a tall order, so when the king died in 1740, his son discontinued the unit to bring the royal budget down to size. Number 5. An Army of Immortals During the Achaemenid Empire of Persia, which spanned from 550 to 330 BC, these warriors were branded immortal because they never let their total number of fighters dip below or rise above 10,000. Thus, the moment that one fighter was killed, he was promptly replaced with another. With this karmic ledger always balanced, this army had quite a reputation. Comprised of Persians, Medes, and Elamites, this army served as the king's personal bodyguards. Imagine 10,000 heavily armed, respawning, gold-adorned men in decorated robes and headdresses invading Greece, and it's understandable why Greek chronicler Herodotus reveled at the sight. An elite subset of 1,000 of these soldiers carried spears bearing golden pomegranates. All members of the 10,000 Immortals were accompanied by women and servants during their sundry military conquest. Ironically, this army has been immortalized in film, fiction, and TV, including 300, and a documentary entitled Last Stand of the 300. The 10,000 Immortals were an exclusive ancient army that appeared to never die. Number 4. An Army of Women Kurdish, Libyan, and Israeli women are blasting away the stereotypes of solely men in combat. For example, the all-female Kurdish defense units, known as the YPJ, not only have the physical prowess and ability to fight ISIS, but have the emotional leverage as well, because ISIS fighters believe they're barred from heaven if killed by a woman. Many of these women are not only fighting ISIS, but Middle Eastern patriarchy. Some soldiers are as young as 18 years old. Another unusual all-female force is the Revolutionary Nuns. During the Libyan Civil War, they served as Muammar Gaddafi's personal security force. Gaddafi opened the Triple Lee Women's Academy in 1979, where the Revolutionary Nuns trained intensively for three years. The nuns abstained from sex and marriage and vowed to dutifully protect Gaddafi until death, including one soldier who died while protecting him during an ambush of his motorcade in 1998. Many attributed Gaddafi's choice of an all-female security force to his idiosyncratic nature. However, Gaddafi created the nuns in honor of his mother, who was an expert archer in her tribe. He wanted to uplift women, and so his nuns were devout to him. Now back to Israel. Israeli women are not only mandated to serve in the Israel Defense Force, but have been serving in combat since 2000, when the Equality Amendment to the Military Services Law recognized the equal right of women to serve. Many of them even take to Instagram to flaunt their combat gear and training. Given this trend of women in combat, perhaps such armies will no longer make it onto an unusual army's top 10 list in the future. Number 3. Sealess Sailors Let's take a break from armies for a moment and talk about another military faction which could be even stranger. They are navies that should really be armies. The notion of a landlocked navy may take the wind out of your sails. Don't throw in the towel just yet, because these entities do exist. Such navies navigate and patrol major lakes and rivers. For instance, although Bolivia lost access to the Pacific Ocean in the 1879 War of the Pacific, it boasts a 5,000-strong navy that patrols Lake Titicaca and the country's larger rivers. Their navy also exists because Bolivia has not reconciled with its loss of its coast to Chile, so its navy exists partly to keep the hope alive of recovering its coast by cultivating a maritime consciousness. Elsewhere, while Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan navies operate on the Caspian Sea, they are nevertheless technically landlocked, since the sea does not connect naturally to the ocean. And if you are wondering, Mongolia's landlocked navy consists of a single vessel. Thus, not all who are nautical are seafaring. 
Number two, an army of horses. The Indian Army 61st Cavalry Regiment is the largest horse-mounted cavalry used for non-ceremonial purposes in the world. The 61st Cavalry is comprised of a handful of discreet horsed cavalry units from the late 1940s and 50s, which merged into a single new unit in 1954. The regiment is largely utilized for ceremonial purposes. However, more than a horse and pony show, the regiment also performs internal security and police functions as needed, including, most notably, during the 1971 Indo-Pakistani War. Number one, an army of costumes. Whether dressing as the enemy or as women to throw off the Confederate army, the Jesse Scouts were an unconventional lot during the American Civil War. The Jesse Scouts bore the name of General John C. Fremont's wife, Jesse Benton Fremont, and were formed in 1861. These 60 Union Army soldiers would use such costumes to confuse the enemy and deliver and obtain information. Donning enemy garb was not just a meander into the eccentric during the Civil War. Wearing the wrong uniform constituted an act of espionage, which was punishable by death. Nevertheless, the Scouts deployed a new and effective military strategy. Small groups of scouts would penetrate enemy lines, and if undetected, obtain crucial tactical information. They say that behind every good man is a woman, and this is true for General Fremont's wife, Jessie, who not only inspired the name of this unusual army, but was rumored to have written many of her husband's later writings. These military units have demonstrated the incredible diversity of armies throughout the past and at present and across the world. Which one did you think was most unusual? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.